Hi, my name is Dave Upthegrove, your state representative in Olympia. I'm proud to represent the 33rd Legislative District, which includes the west half of the city of Kent. The 2009 legislative session has adjourned, and I'm here on the House floor, which as you can see is pretty quiet right now. This is the time of year when legislators return home to their districts, and for me that means coming back home to Des Moines, where I live. It means listening to people and talking with people in the community about what happened here in Olympia this year. I hope to have the opportunity to meet with you at some point, but in the meantime, I thought this short video message would enable me to talk a little bit about some of the tough choices that lawmakers face this year when drafting our state's budget. We recently passed a two-year, $32 billion budget for the state of Washington, and we did this work on time. It was not an easy budget to draft because the state is facing a serious revenue shortfall and this revenue shortfall is due primarily to the national, if not global, economic recession we're currently facing. And basically, there are services we as a state provide, and there are costs associated with those services. And our state revenue forecasts show that we won't have enough money coming in to keep providing those same services at the same level. So like I said, some tough choices had to be made. And in the end, I believe we passed what is a responsible budget. We did our job and we finished on time. And from the beginning, I was committed to engaging in this budget process with as much creativity and compassion as possible. And while I would have preferred a more balanced approach instead of an all cuts budget, the reality is that there wasn't enough support inside or outside the legislature for raising taxes at this time. Here in Olympia, we operate within certain constraints. One of these constraints is that the citizens of Washington passed an initiative in 2007 which prohibits the legislature from raising taxes, including closing tax loopholes, without a two-thirds vote of both the House and the Senate. There currently are not enough votes in the legislature to overcome this two-thirds requirement. And additionally, our state constitution requires that certain taxes be spent only on specific things. As an example, our gas tax can only be used for transportation. We can't shift gas tax money over to another program or another service. Also, our state's construction budget can't be spent on items in the operating budget. And there's a simple reason for this, and it is that the construction budget is funded heavily through construction bonds, and those bonds must be used for building things like schools and other public buildings. So within these constraints, we were still able to pass a budget that will fund some of our highest priorities here in Washington. I don't want to minimize the fact that we had to make cuts, some of them pretty deep. These cuts are painful and they hurt real people. We had to reduce the health care safety net in our state that many families and individuals rely upon. Our teachers, some of the hardest working and most dedicated people in our state, won't get cost of living increases. Some of them will lose their jobs and a college education will cost more, a hardship for many families already struggling to pay tuition bills. And we estimate nearly 7,000 state employees will lose their jobs in already tough economic times. Making these choices weighed very heavily on me. I entered public service because I believe we need to do more, not less, to help the vulnerable and those in need. I supported the idea of some kind of revenue increase so that we wouldn't have to make some of these tough cuts. But in the end, the necessary two-thirds vote was just not there. I voted for the final budget, even though there was much I didn't like about it, because I knew that voting no was not going to benefit anyone. A no vote wouldn't produce more revenue, help our schools, create jobs, or strengthen our safety net. And I knew that this is the revenue that's available right now, and these are the competing demands for state services right now. And this is the budget we produce to deal, imperfectly of course, with our economy, our revenue, the demands of the people of Washington State, and the demands of our own consciences. Despite its imperfectness, there are still some things that are positive and worth noting in this budget. I'm pleased to say that in the construction budget, there's $10 million, and that $10 million is going to help communities in the Green River Valley certify levees ahead of a deadline imposed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And why is this important? Because the certification of these levies means that thousands of homes and businesses will not be forced to purchase flood insurance. This was a top priority for me and for the city of Kent. I'm also very happy that within the operating budget, 
our pediatric interim care center in Kent was spared cuts that could have forced it to shut its doors. We need this valuable resource in our community to care for drug babies, avoiding high hospital expenses while providing nurturing, compassionate care to the most vulnerable in our society. One thing I know is that tough times don't last forever. This global economic downturn will end and Washington State will bounce back. As I talk to my friends and neighbors and as I meet with folks from all walks of life, I hear a sense of resolve and a sense of hope. We've had tough times before and we've gotten through them. We may need a little extra support from our family. We may need to do more to look out for those in need. But I believe that with a new administration in Washington, D.C., that a new day is coming. And I'm hopeful that despite the difficult decisions and the difficult cuts we had to make to balance the budget, that our state and our community will remain a great place to live, work, and raise a family. I welcome your thoughts and your feedback on the budget or any issue. Please don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email. You also can find me on Facebook. It is an honor to represent our community in the State House, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve.